Hello everyone, Grzegorz Baron here. In this video I'm going to show how I captured and turned a surface of soil into a PBR material using photogrammetry. In details I'm gonna present the capture part, color calibration and initial delighting pass, a photogrammetry reconstruction, I'm gonna build a low poly model for baking, bake a full set of PBR textures, process seam removal pass and logic tweaks on baked textures, and at the end I'm going to process additional ambient occlusion based the lighting pass for the albedo map. With all these steps we should get a nice and clean PBR material of soil. Bear in mind that there are many tools you can use to do the job and there is no the only one or the best tool and they all are in constant chain. This is why I strongly encourage you to play with them all and pick the one which works for you. And these are the tools I picked for this video to present my photogrammetry workflow. I really hope you enjoy it and find something useful for yourself in here. So let's begin. Maybe it sounds weird, but I struggled to capture a good quality, organic looking, generic surface of soil. It took me a really long time to finally find a piece of ground to capture that wasn't marked by bicycle wheels or footprints. But there was a reason why it wasn't marked by a human presence. It was fenced off with barbed wire and surrounded by dangerous animals. And this is the main reason why I decided to use the drone for this capture. I set up the white balance to custom to make sure it doesn't change during the capture. And when done I capture X-Rite color checkers grey card and a page with color clips as a color reference for future color calibration. Because of the barbed wire I didn't use rulers to define the capture area, but I used wooden poles as a point of interest instead to navigate the drone. Next I started the capture. It was pretty hard to maintain equal image coverage due to a really strong wind pushing the drone. In result I took a few more additional images to make sure everything is covered well enough. Finally I managed to capture two images for color calibration and 70 images for photogrammetry based surface reconstruction. Before photogrammetry reconstruction I pre-processed capture raw images with the Photolab 3. I selected all the images to make sure all changes I make are applied to them all. With the white balance color picker I selected the neutral calibration clip from the image with the X-Rite color checker to set up the white balance. Next I turned off all geometry fixes. So I turned off cropping as there is no reason why we would intentionally lose any data we already have and I turned off the fix for perspective distortion as photogrammetry software does it better. Since all images were captured with ISO 100 in bright day I turned off noise reduction but kept vignetting. Finally I did some delighting by playing with highlights and shadow setting. To get better preview I selected image with the surface to get it visible in the main window and since I wanted changes to be applied to all of these images at the same time I reselected all of them by pressing Ctrl and A again. As you can see there are some dark areas in cracks I want to make brighter. At this stage we just need to be careful and don't go too crazy to do not mess with colors. Any changes in blacks and shadows have to be compensated with highlights so the images don't get too bright or too dark. When done we can export our result as 16-bit TIFF files. Next we can load all the TIFF images for photogrammetry reconstruction to Agisoft Metashape. Let's estimate image quality to see how good are the images I captured. Usually image scored below 0.5 is useless for reconstruction and image scored as 1 is perfect and can't be better. Everything around 0.75 is good. As you can see all images are between 0.8 and 0.9 which is a really great score for the drone and we can get a lot of high quality data from these images. The only problem might be with messy coverage but let's see how it goes. 
Next, let's set up all reconstruction steps using batch process. This way we don't have to process reconstruction step by step, but we automate it all. So let's set up image alignment. Next, let's reconstruct the surface and turn it into mesh using depth maps and free arbitrary mode. Next, let's generate the albedo map from the images using auto UV mapping and set the resolution to 16,000 pixels. This way we get four times more albedo data to what we need since I want to create just 4K texture. And finally, after all previous steps are done, let's export generated high poly mesh and the albedo texture. Next, let's tick save project after each step, as this way, if anything goes wrong, we don't have to start everything since the beginning. When done, let's hit the OK button and come back when everything is done. In this case, all these steps took about two hours. When done, we can see the full result. As expected, camera position when images were taken are pretty messy. I would say that some more images in the middle would be very helpful. But even without them the result is pretty decent. The mesh itself has 50 million polys and looks pretty ok, but would be nice if it is even a bit denser. The generated texture itself is really good. Since 50 million polys is a lot to work with in ZBrush, to generate and align low poly model we need a bit lighter high poly model. To do this let's decimate the high poly model to 3.5 million polys and when done let's export it. From my experience 3.5 million polys is totally enough for 3D reference. Next, when done, let's import our 3.5 million dense high poly model to ZBrush, generate a low poly plane we can use for baking and align it with the high poly model so it covers 2 meters by 2 meters. I used wooden poles as a scale reference from the video I recorded as I knew that they are 2 meters apart. To check additional details, I also used the calibration image I took. Next, let's bring plane 3D. In ZBrush, it is auto UV mapped, so we don't have to do any UV unwrapping. Let's scale it to get 2 by 2 meters coverage and align it with the high poly surface. We need to make sure that the main alignment is pretty accurate, otherwise, we can get very hard to remove height gradient across the texture. To do this, let's decrease the mesh density so it won't follow micro details and let's apply geometry projection. When done, we can export the plane as a low poly model ready for baking. To activate Baker in Substance Designer, we need to start any project and bring our low poly model there. When done, we can run the Baker from the low poly model context menu. Next, we need to set it up and run the Baker, which will generate set of PPR textures for us. When done, we need to tile all the textures, fix glitches and tweak it until we are happy with the result. To do this, let's use Art Engine. Art Engine is a great tool when we work with any generic surfaces. All the hard job is usually done by the AI when we execute its node. Let's compose the PPR material. 
Let's try to process some albedo delighting based on height map information. Next, let's plug sim removal node, which is going to remove sims, but also replace any masked data we don't want. This way, we can remove all the grass, glitchy areas, repetitive stones, we just need to mark all those things with mask and plug it into the ignore input. When done, we can execute the sim removal node and the AI does all the job for us by rebuilding the material. We can modify the mask and execute the sim removal node as many times as we want until we are happy with the final result. When done, we can export all PBR maps. Unfortunately, all the lighting we did so far still isn't enough for the albedo, so let's try to fix it once and for all with the Substance Designer. First, let's rearrange windows so you can get better view. Let's bring all PBR textures and plug them into outputs to get a better material preview. As you can see, there are still a lot of dark, wet-looking spots in concave areas of the albedo map, and we need to find a way to clean it up a bit more. The idea with the delighting in Substance Designer is quite simple. I'm gonna use Baked Ambient Occlusion Map as a mask, which tells me where all concaves are, and use it to blend together an albedo map with its equalized version. So first, let's generate equalized version of albedo. To do this, I use color equalizer node and play with the radius to get quite color flat version of albedo. If we go too far, we lose color information, so we need to find the right balance. Next, let's bring a blend node and plug both versions of albedos for blending. We need to invert our ambient occlusion map and plug it into mask input. This way we are going to affect only concaves. And this is the result. With the opacity slider we can change how much of equalized texture we want. When we are happy with the result we can export the final albedo map. And here it is. Now let's replace the initial albedo map with the new one and the material is ready to go. I think we made it. Let's apply all the textures to preview the result in Marmoset Toolbox scene. And this is the final result and I think it works quite well. Last but not least, I almost lost the drone in this location when I was shooting a video with horses and cows to be used as a workflow background, like the one with cows at the beginning when I present the workflow. Next to the cows you saw at the beginning were also horses and I found that it might be cool to record them all as well and just pick a better one. Suddenly, a super aggressive seagull in full attack mode appeared from nowhere aiming the drone. She made three direct attempts to take off the drone, but I managed to dodge in the last moment. But with every dodge, I was almost sure I won't make it and I'm gonna lose the drone. And even when I finally hovered the drone directly next to me, the seagull gave up. She made the last circle and flew away. So finally, everything has ended fine. After the incident with a seagull, I managed to capture the soil, recorded the video about it and put it together so you can watch it now. I really hope you enjoyed it and found something useful for you here. If you want me to create even more videos like this one, please subscribe to my channel, give the thumbs up and drop a comment. Big thanks to all of you who did it already. See ya in the next one, bye!